Carnival was released in 1999, written by John Magrum and Steve Miller, with interior art by Kevin McCann and a cover by Todd Lockwood. And it is 64 pages. It will be the last official product released for the Ravenloft campaign setting in 2nd edition. It was based off the Carnival detailed in the Ravenloft novel Carnival of Fear. However, it only bare bones resembles that. It's been updated and overhauled very heavily. And it is written in the character, or several characters I should say, and with DM information in the box text. Carnival is a traveling show that tours Ravenloft. Whenever the carnival is about to arrive, flyers begin to show up announcing its arrival. Dark Lords cannot enter the carnival, and it is a safe haven for those who are on the run or seek shelter. Isolode, who is the leader of carnival, will usually take in anyone who needs protection. There are three factions inside the carnival, with each having their own opinion of Isolod and what she is. His old, I guess we'll say is old, is an Eladrin from the Outer Plains, basically an angel. She has come to Ravenloft to hunt down and destroy her sworn enemy, the Gentleman Caller. And if you've watched any of my other reviews, you know who he is. He's a demon seducing women, having children, causing a lot of trouble in the realm of dread and a major player in its lore. However, the gentleman caller is always aware of when she's hot on his trail since the flyers show up announcing Carnival's arrival. This is kind of the dark powers protecting the gentleman caller. <clears throat> now, Isolode has no fear of the Dark Lords or any other threat. And since she's from the Outer Plains, she has sort of a reality wrinkle like demons do when they enter Ravenloft. Anyone in her reality wrinkle, for any length of time, begins to change. This is called the twisting, and it brings out the worst aspects of a person's soul to the forefront, making them deformed or giving them special type abilities. So the guide is written in character, or characters, you the reader, are a lost soul on the run and you find yourself at the carnival. Now the first third of the guide is written or told from the main Barker that's he's kind of a the ring announcer type person for those who don't know carnival or circus lingo. <clears throat> His name is Tyndall and he's gonna give you a tour of the carnival. He takes you on a tour of his faction of performers who think is a load is an angel. You meet the imp, the brute, the illuminated man, the snake mistress, wooden head, the living skeleton, the hideous man beast, the vampiris, Mr. Question Mark, and the amazing soulless man. His faction believes that Isolode is an angel and that the twisting is caused by the land itself and that the reason Isolode moves around so much is to protect them from it. This faction is somewhat at peace with the twisting and the way it has affected them. The second part of the guide is Madame Fortuna giving you the tour and showing off her faction. They are Vistani who were outcasts from other tribes for one reason or another, but they're not darkling, so they're not evil. They know the truth about Isolode and are neutral about everything. They have come up with a way to stop the twisting, but this requires them to not speak and wear special makeup at all times. Since Madame Fortuna is the spokesperson for her faction, she is affected by the twisting. Now she does this voluntarily. They call themselves the Skura, and they are the ones who navigate the carnival through the mist. And here you will meet the Blade Brothers, the Crimson Rose, the Familiar, the Organ Grinder, and the Fates Three. The final part of the book is a tour given by Professor Bacali. He and his faction believe that Isolude is evil, and that is the cause of the twisting. They have been the most affected by the twisting because they were the most evil, selfish people before the twisting took hold of them, and they find their situation almost unbearable. Bacali has been in contact with the gentleman caller and is working on a scheme to trap 
it's a load. He shows you the true freak show of the carnival, the gargantuan, the squid woman, the geek, the fire eater, tentaphilus, and a group they keep locked up called the Abominations, where the twisting has totally altered them or Isolode has punished and transformed them. The final part of the guide is a series of short adventure outlines designed for adventurers to interact with the carnival and become involved in Bacali's plot to imprison Isolode and a battle between Isolode and the Gentleman Caller. Now this is my only real gripe with the guide. I wish the supplement was given more pages. It needed more pages. So that the adventures could be given more detail and maybe even could be a full-fledged adventures and a full-fledged campaign. <clears throat> the outlines are okay, but a full-on campaign with Carnival would have been great. This really should have been a supplement the size of the Shadow Rift. Now this is hands down one of the best products in the entire Ravenloft product line. The read through it was so entertaining, I just wanted more and more. It was like a good book I never wanted to end. The use of carnival lingo throughout feels very authentic and makes you feel like you are really at a carnival. Every performer there is unique and has their own distinct personality and after the reading list, you will feel like you are actual part of the show. And that's a good thing. Like I said, this is a must have and if you do have it, you're very lucky. I have seen this guy go for $300 to $600 on eBay. And that's what it's going for right now at the time of this filming. It is the most expensive product in the Ravenloft product line to purchase on the second market. One reason I think is the guide is so damn good. Another is that this was the last official product for Ravenloft 2nd Edition, so I think its release was somewhat limited. They just wanted to get what they had out into the market before 3rd Edition came out and that may have affected distribution. If you know the backstory behind the whole TSR bankruptcy and how they just had products sitting in a warehouse that they couldn't pay the publisher to print so a lot of ideas were just stuck there and never became a fruition. Well, this this may have kind of had an that may kind of had an effect on this product and why it was released was so limited. Also on the cover, as you notice that on the cover of this product and I think a few of the Children of the Night guides um, before the end of second edition, after Wizards bought TSR, you notice that the Ravenloft logo is real small, and they always have the for use in any other Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting. Okay, this of course was an attempt to make more money, sell more product, so you know, um, if you were just a person like myself who just wanted to buy a Ravenloft product, you may go into the store and the Ravenloft logo was so little you may not even have seen it. I know I missed it more than one time um, looking at this product when it first came out. So you may have missed it that way as well. So it's, it was just a hard product to get a hold of. Um, honestly, now no book is worth three to six hundred dollars in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't care what it is. So if you can find a way to get a PDF copy of this product, then get it, download it. Because this product's read is just plain out worth it, and it's a valuable piece of the Ravenloft product line to have. Um, if you're big bucks, McGee, and you can spend a ton of money, then by all means go for it. If you have it already, hey, you're really lucky. But uh, no, it's not worth the 300 to 600 dollars. If it ever comes down significantly, then yes, this is worth getting just somehow get a hold of a copy of this product. Freak show or sanctuary? It's all a matter of perspective when you're at Carnival. Carnival offers a glimpse of abnormal and unnatural things most genteel folk never talk about, much less see. This Carnival is not a simple sideshow though, and its performers are far more than freaks on display. Carnival is a wandering haven for those who have no place else to go, including adventurers who made enemies of the wrong people. Under the protection of its mysterious mistress, 
is alone. It offers refuge to those rejected by the world. Outcasts and lost souls of all kinds can find solace here, and sometimes even a second chance at life. But nothing at Carnival comes without a price. This accessory draws back the curtain on dark secrets that will enrich any AD&D campaign with a touch of the bizarre and horrific. Included are over a dozen richly detailed nine-player characters. Details on the price that Carnival exacts from those who travel with it and story seeds to lure unsuspecting heroes into a web of mystery and trickery.